Hey guys, it's Brandon Lewis here. I hope you're doing all right. I'm super excited to talk about what is probably one of the two topics that I have discovered help owners make more money in their painting business with less effort, uh, probably this in sales than anything else. And so I apologize. I'm coming to you. I've been uh, out of town looking at um, locations for the 2020 Painting Profit Summit. And so I've been out of town for almost three days. And so I decided to spend some time here at the house uh, with the fam today. And so I'm coming to you live from the baby's room. Yes, the baby's room. That's why we've got pink on the walls and a gun cabinet here because you, know, you live in a 1930s craftsman house. The stuff's got to go somewhere. So she's still crawling. I doubt she can get into these puppies yet. <laughs> so they're going to hang in here just a little while longer. So let's dig into this. I would take out a pen and a piece of paper so that you can really uh, dive in and learn about some things that you can implement on your own in your painting business that will reduce the amount of tire kicking leads that you get and will increase the number of repeats and referrals. With that having been said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that I do a little quick sound check here. From the attendees if you can hear me tap into the questions box brandon we can hear you loud and clear so i know that the audio is coming through as it should be all right i'm getting lots of yeses thank you norman thank you ian very good you can see the webcam and you can see the screen correct both things yes thank you steve i appreciate you thank you victor you're very kind all right here we go so these are, and just in case you know, I'll take questions at the end, but I do not um, mute or unmute the lines simply because it gets really loud because a lot of people do not have webcams. And so if, um, if you will hang in there until the end, if you press the button, I'll make sure to answer your question. And I'm gonna go ahead and just before we get started, make sure that my phone is off, you might want to do the same. And I'm gonna ask my wife to, turn off the air conditioner that just came on downstairs so that maybe you don't get any feedback on what I'm hearing right over here. I think none of you would really like be aggravated at me if I just got up and shut that thing off. So I'm going to do it right now. If you'll hang on, talk amongst yourselves. Don't commit any gun violence. I'll be right back. All right. Down to a whisper. We covered that puppy up. All right. Here we go. So. I'm gonna hide my webcam here, but y'all can still see it. I'm gonna hide these controls and we're gonna get right down to business. So we are gonna move fast. I'm gonna to try to get us out of here right at five o'clock, which means you're gonna to need to take notes to make sure that you pick up on everything. So let's get ready. So what we're gonna to discover today is in my opinion, the sad and both happy reality about your past clients and their purchase behaviors. Uh, the purchase behaviors are completely different than you probably think they are. We're going to talk about how repeat and referral business can transform your personal income. And we're not just going to talk about it with slides and anecdotal claptrap and pictures. We're going to look at numbers. Um, our academy members always uh, kind of make fun of me because I really, I make people dig into the numbers. Because that's really what we deposit, right? When we look at our bank account, if we're not happy, why aren't we happy? Because the number's what? Low. It's a number. So we're going to look at the numbers and how repeat and referral transactions completely transform your painting business. We're going to look at the methods, messaging, and timing for maximizing repeat and referral business. So here we go. Who is this for? This is for painters frustrated with cold, crappy leads. A lot of the conversations I hear and I just got back from an industry conference uh, surround the fact that people get tired of, of going and looking at projects that they never get. And they always think it's something about their sales process. And if they just finagled their sales process perfectly or if they tried to pre-qualify people, which is stupid. Uh, I'm doing a, a Painters Weekly video on that next week and it can't be done. The big thing I always ask is, well, what if we took a, a step or two back and we just went back to the lead source? They don't want to hear that, but that's really the, the first solution to the problem. Owners fed up with low closing rates because of lead sourcing that's bad. Estimators that are tired of running all over town and wasting time. And contractors who 
don't like getting beat by low priced painters. And again, all of this comes back to the source of the lead and your relationship with the lead. So who am I? I grew up in Arab, Alabama, and we were poor folks to poor folks. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but I think it's important. Dad couldn't read or write and never been to school in his life. Uh, had club foot, facial deformities. We lived in an old sawmill slot house with one sink in the uh, in the kitchen with the red well water that ran out of it for the first two or three minutes. Uh, so we were just real poor. But he convinced me that it was critically important to go to school. So I did and um, ended up getting my undergraduate in marketing and my master's in entrepreneurship. I'm a husband and a father that is pictured in the top right here. Uh, my smoking hot wife, Kristen. My two young daughters, that's back at Christmas. So, they're, you know, the little one especially is a little bit bigger. And then some of my guy friends, friends are a big deal to me. I get a lot of people together several times a year. I think the art of manly friendship is being lost in this country and probably across the world. And we need to get back to it. I like old country music, Waylon Jennings, Marl Haggard, Johnny Cash, stuff like that. And I'm Presbyterian, which means you were predestined to be on this presentation, whether you wanted to or not. So uh, thanks for coming. My professional background is kind of weird. Um, I've been where you are if you own a painting business now, but I did not start out there. I can't paint. I've never painted. Um, but I started out in politics and I worked on U.S. Senate, U.S. House, state and local races, wrote for our uh, political magazines, wrote a book called How to Raise Money for Political Office. And one reason that I'm so passionate about repeat and referral business is because in politics and nonprofits, especially politics, you've got this pressure cooker of a deadline called an election. And if you are one dollar short, one vote short, they pack up all your crap in a box and the whole organization statewide. Hundreds of people are fired overnight. Could you imagine if you made one dollar less than any competitor in your area? And if that happened, they closed your painting business down and kept all the money. You would be really motivated. Right. And the thing that we had in politics and nonprofits was this. We only had a list of people. And a relationship with them. And the way they felt about us, that's all we could offer them. No tangible service, no tangible anything. And for that relationship and feeling, they were going to give us thousands of dollars, hundreds of dollars, tens of dollars in some cases. So the thing I love about painting as it relates to the topic we're talking about today with repeats, referrals and reactivation, uh, really the retention portion of that is that not only can we make people feel a certain way about us and our business in the painting industry, we also have a tangible service of value. We didn't have that in politics. We didn't have that in nonprofits. We didn't. It's like you helped somebody, you went for a political cause, you feel a certain way. So I started my painting business in 2008 during the Great Recession. It was remarkably rough. I made tons of mistakes uh, using traditional image marketing that did not work. Uh, ran through my savings, was worried about paying the mortgage. It was a big, huge mess. In 2008, was not a friendly time to start a business, as many of you can remember or know. But I really discovered direct response marketing, a uh, couple of mentors, uh, got back to my roots, which is multi-step, multimedia marketing, which is what we did in politics. Long story short, we built it up to over a million dollars. I sold it for $440,000 in 2013. And I've never touched a paintbrush, but two times in my life. And I was fired the first time. I was 15 or 16. And Dr. Garrett put me on a rental property painting it. And I was so slow and it was so messy. After about a day and a half, he took me off of it. And then one time I tried to paint my grandmother's handrails uh, for her. And that didn't work out well either. But I'm really good at marketing sales and the business side, operations, management, recruiting, hiring. And so that's what I help people with. My industry background is you've probably seen my work. In American Painting Contractor Magazine, PDCA, In Paint, uh, Sherwin Williams PPC Magazine, The Paint Contractor. We have lots of support from some of the industry's largest organization. We put on a uh, an industry event every year. Uh, this is some pictures from our 2019 Painting Profit Summit. If you did not make it uh, this year, I hope you make it next year. It's really fun. So I've been doing this uh, over five years now, and I love it. I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of painting contractors from 20, 30, 40 million dollars independently down to a few hundred. I've worked with franchise uh, units, both individually and at the corporate level. And I've watched what I'm about to show you work in Switzerland, England, Australia, Canada, Florida, 
California, urban, um, rural, doesn't matter, works everywhere. Okay, and I've, I've watched it be translated into other languages and work. So this works, I promise you. So again, we're gonna look at the sad reality about your client's purchase behaviors, how repeat and referral leads transform personal income, the methods, messaging, and timing for maximizing repeat and referral business. So let's talk first about the sad, and in my opinion, happy, because if you know what to do about it, you could change it, reality about your past clients and their purchase behaviors. So first off, absent communication, your clients forget you and move on. And this is, the numbers bear this out. Everybody thinks if they, if they do a good job that their clients remember them. I'm here to tell you that that's not the case because you should, ex, you should grow every year exponentially without end if we did not have in our industry this retention issue. The sad reality is most people have very poor retention practices for past clients, B2B referral sources, and potential commercial prospects. So after year three, everyone gets the pleasure of starting over again forever. And if yours doesn't happen in year three, it happens in year seven, it happens in year 10, happens in year 15, whenever it happens. And once it happens, you're stuck. So I always ask people, you know, I don't know my, are all my clients remember me. Every one of them buys. I never have anybody move on to another contractor, which is I've never seen that to be the case. But I'll ask people, do you have, especially when I'm out talking in a group, do you have young children? And you may be able to hear my young children, uh, one of them in the neighbor girl playing outside on the deck so if you hear some some laughter um that's them outside and so i'll ask people who has kids raise your hand in here and people raise their hands who have asked kids that are two or three years old raise your hand and they'll raise their hand and i'll say well on the scale of one to ten how important is johnny to you little johnny 10 how long were you in labor 18 hours on the scale of one to ten how important was it that johnny came into the world healthy 10 okay Compared that to the last time you had some work done around your house, landscaping, plumbing, painting, cabinetry work, on a scale of one to 10, how does it compare? Maybe a two. How important was it that it was delivered perfectly to you? Maybe a two, maybe a three. And then I asked this question. Okay, if that's the case, what was the name of the nurse that delivered your child? You know, the one that was in there with you for 18 hours, 12 hours, 24 hours. No one ever knows. No one ever knows at this critical moment with the most important transaction of their life, probably this procedure, they can't remember the name of the nurse. But we think because we stood on their porch and talked to them for 20 or 30 minutes that they remember us forever simply isn't the case. And here's the perfect example. This is my story, a plumbing fiasco. I had this gentleman who is a great, fantastic plumber in our area who did work for me about two or three thousand dollars. and I loved his work. I loved his guys. Everything was perfect. We had a field line, had to cut down a tree. I live in a 1930s craftsman house. It's only about 21, 2200 square feet. And so we had to get the tree down. Well, I had to have about a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars worth of work done again. About nine to ten months later, I went looking for this guy. I knew his name had something to do with our city name, which is River City. And the other one is the scenic city. I looked for plumbing companies, looked and looked and looked and looked. Could not find him, could not find his company. Spent probably 15, 20 minutes trying to find it. I mean, most of your clients will not even do that. I'm in the man in a van business. I should remember this stuff, right? His name is Riverside Plumbing. Riverside. Didn't know it. Saw him in Walmart like two or three months after the work had been done. I said, bud, you ever thought about maybe communicating with your clients after you do some work with them so they can remember who you are? Because I just told them the story I just told you. I said, you've got to start communicating with your past clients. I've never heard a word from them, probably never will. OK, so that's the, that's the issue. Word of mouth marketing. This is what most people say. Well, my best marketing is word of mouth marketing. I hear it all the time. And it basically consists of hiding in a closet and hoping that your phone rings with repeat and referral business. That's not marketing. That's like, that's like hoping that your business will be successful. It's not marketing. When something happens to you through no effort of your own, that's not marketing. That's just a little bit of luck because some people remember you. So you have to understand organic spending. OK, and the term organic spending, organic spending is the amount of painting services purchased on average 
each year by a person on your in-house list, okay, people that have bought from you previously, it's roughly about $1,000 a year. Take, for example, at my house here, to paint the whole outside, it's probably $6,500, $7,000. I've got a big wraparound deck outside and a fenced-in yard, and that's, you know, two or $3,000. I've got a few rooms I'm going to paint downstairs. We've painted the baby's room when the baby came in uh, recently. Um, we pressure wash stuff. I have to paint the porch, whatever. It runs out to somebody who never does their own painting work. It's about $1,000 a year. So we grossly underestimate the amount and frequency of painting purchases. We think, oh, well, if I paint for them once, they're not going to paint again. They won't paint soon. They won't spend much money on painting. That is not true at all. We have not discovered that at all. With the members that have worked with me and that's not the case they spend more than we think they spend it more frequently than we think and the beauty is with your repeat clients this does not this thousand dollar a year number doesn't even account for the referrals and most people say well my best marketing is word of mouth referrals that is the referral business i'm not talking about the referral i'm just talking about the organic spending every client on your list is like a little rental property and they kick off about a thousand dollars a year in organic spending. I know that number is good. I feel comfortable with it. It's more in urban areas. It's about that in your middle of America areas. I don't know what the amount is for referrals. When I know something for sure, I will tell you and I'll jump up and down and scream it and tell you that you're wrong and I'm right. But I don't know this, okay? I think it's probably $250, something like that, $200. I mean, that would be my guess. So $1,200. To twelve hundred and fifty dollars a year if you count repeat and referral spending. So doing a good job does not help you retain most clients. I'm going to say that again. If you do a good job, that's not marketing. People say my best job marketing is doing a good job. That's not marketing. That's just operations. But marketing is what happens before the sale and then after this the project is completed. Okay. So this is what I typically see. And if I looked at your business, this is probably what I would see if you're not a member of our organization. You have a client list of 250 people. Watch the numbers here, okay? We're in the far left-hand column. You have a client list of 250 clients. Your repeat organic spending should be $250,000. When I ask about what the percentage is, or maybe if you track it, the captured repeat business is only really about 37500 500 rather, which means you're leaving 212500 on the table. Now, maybe your number's twice that. Maybe it's not 15%. Maybe it's higher. But what happens over time is your, is your list grows in-house is I will see people who have, no joke, $1.5 million, a list of 1,500 people in organic spending. They're only capturing about 225000 of it, and $1.2 million is going to competitors. I promise you, when Mrs. Johnson needs to paint her house, if she can't find you again, do you think she just doesn't paint her house? That, that people just paint with the first person they ever paint with. And after that, if they can't find that person, they just never paint. Nope, they just go paint with your competitors. The reason that no one has any market share, and I may go over this again later in this, in this, uh, in this presentation, is because no one retains their clients. That's why you don't have any dominant market players in any given market. Everybody's got like 0.05% of the market. Maybe the biggest guys in your market might have 1% or 2%, maybe 3%. And everything else is just, and we just keep trading customers, trading customers, what I call catch and release marketing. So the majority of established painting contractors do, do not need, I kid you not, at the point that they're in their business when I look at it usually. Now later they do, but usually when I first look at a painting business, they do not need one single solitary new client at that moment in time. They don't need another. They need first need to you know what, win back the ones they've already served. It's ridiculous. Oh, well, if I want a new, I need new leads, new leads. Why well, to the leads you already found? They're actually customers that close at higher rates, that have larger transactions and aren't price sensitive. What happened to those? Oh, I don't want the good ones. I want to go after the crappy ones. You mean the crappy ones you're already complaining about? Yeah, those. That make any sense. What happens? We just, we got something that we should do that would work and we just get distracted by bright and shiny objects all the time. New, new, new. It's like an epidemic. It's some kind of virus that painters have. I don't understand it. So this is how your repeat lead and percentage mix affects your personal outcome. And if you've tuned out, I want you to tune back in. This is probably 
this is probably the one of the most eye-opening things that anyone will ever share with you in your painting business. It is truly eye-opening. So we're going to walk through it right now. So we know that your past clients versus prospective new clients behave in a different way. And here's what we have discovered in looking at hundreds of painting businesses and data, both franchised, independent, all over the board. Repeat business closes at about 65 to 70 percent. Some people get higher rates. Net new clients, the ones that you, you get, just brand new people that don't know you, that aren't referred, usually close between 25 and 32 percent, depending on the quality of the lead source that you've generated them from and your sales process and how persuasive it is. Some things like trade show leads are going to obviously close at a higher rate, especially if it's a paid trade show lead, meaning they paid to get in there. It's going to close at a higher lead than, say, a, a, an Internet lead. An SEO lead is going to close at a higher rate than a paid per service lead like Home Advisor or something like that. There's some variances in there, but as a general rule, cost of sale for a repeat lead is usually around $50 or less, sometimes $12, $15. Okay, I'm being conservative. I'm bumping this up. Cost of sale, and I see this routinely of net new clients, especially with larger companies that process tons of work, $250 to $400. Higher transaction sizes with repeat business. When you look at people that have bought from you a second, third, and fourth time, the average transaction size is higher. Why? Because they trust you. When you do your first transaction with somebody, you're kind of like, I don't know this guy. But if you've done work with someone over and over and over again, you really kind of just get to a point where you're like, just do it and send me a bill. I've got a 72 Blazer that I drive, and I've done tons of work with it. Right now, I'm having to have the flywheel replaced on it, and the starter, and what else? Bobby's doing something else, putting a, a new distributor on it. He's done so much work on that thing, I just drop it off and just say, do it. But I didn't feel like that the first time he did my roll bars and did the paint work. I mean, I got a referral for him, but I didn't know him. But after he did that work the first time, I was like, that's pretty good. But then he's done it three or four different times. And I just drop it off, say, Bobby, do it. And then I go pick up the invoice and I'm happy. I was not like that in my first transaction. This is kind of common sense, but you'll see how it plays out financially in a moment. They are more price sensitive. OK, or actually, I reversed this. This is more price sensitive, less price sensitive. It should be the reverse. Repeat business is less price sensitive. Net new clients are more price sensitive. Repeat business trusts you. Net new clients do not trust you because we have a we're in an industry with a bad reputation. It precedes us. People afraid of the folks that are coming in their house that they do not know. Have they been background checked? What's your warranty? What's your guarantee? How can I vouch for them? How do I know these people don't have records or drug abuse issues? They can steal stuff at my house. I mean, it's a big transaction and it's high risk. So they don't trust you. Your new clients don't. And then finally, this is something I think people completely miss. Repeat clients, someone who's done business with you, can refer you. That extra $250 in sales a year per client, they can refer you. A new client cannot refer you. So. The thing that kills me is like, if you know that these things are true, then why do you go after bad leads? I don't really understand why people don't spend any time or money on the repeat clients. It's just crazy. So let's look at a typical company, okay, that does, that has 300 leads a year, meaning you're going to look at 300 leads, okay? Follow me here. Look at the top part of this. This is what I call an 80-10-10 business, meaning 80% of your work is, is net new, new, came from some new source. They found you online, you bought leads, you put mail out, you did canvassing, whatever, okay? Yard signs, vehicle signage, whatever. 80%, let's say they close at a 30% rate. That means that the total number of sales you're going to do is 72 the net new average sale is 2700 the net new average cost per sale is 200 that 2700 is actually pretty high but i'm going to be conservative here net new gross profits after marketing because if your marketing expense at your average cost of sale again being conservative at $200 it's a pretty good cost of sale to be honest 
$63,000, okay, gross profit um, per sale after marketing is 2640 okay? Now, your repeat business is 10%, and you follow those numbers in the same way. Referral business, 10%. Follow those numbers at the same way. See, when you add these up, you end up getting a gross profits uh, after marketing of 108,045. Okay, are you following me so far? Let's take the exact same business, exact same business, and let's look at the numbers if you shift the mix a little bit, okay? You shift it from 60% new to 20% repeat, 20% referral. You will watch because your, your new ones close at a higher rate because the transaction size is slightly higher and because your cost of lead is lower. Means that you're going to make more money, okay? Roughly in this example, about $28,000 more from just shifting the mix. Does it make sense? Doing the same number of leads, exact same number of leads, but our gross profits, okay, have risen considerably by 28,000, okay? And gross profits, once you're past break even, are net profits in our business. And then finally, what if we end up going to a 40, 30, 30 mix, meaning repeats are 30, referrals are 30, and the gross, the uh, new is only 40%. Four and 10 are new, six and 10 are repeat and referral. Well, when you do this, for processing the same 300 leads, nothing else has changed. Nothing else has changed. You don't have to hire any more estimator, no more painters, no more, you're not processing more work. We see a 53% increase in gross profits. It's $60,000 almost. This is why I'm constantly harping on our business owners to make sure that they're getting their share of the repeat and referral business because net new is just so expensive. So the thing that kills me about what I'm presenting here today, it's probably eye-opening to most of you on the call that have never thought about this, but it really shouldn't be. You go to Harbor Freight, what do they do at the cash register? Are you on our program? Can we sign you up? Can we get your information? And what do they do? They send you their information all the time by email. They'll send it by text. They'll send it by mail. Three different mediums. They'll follow you around on the Internet if you go to their website. When you show up to their website, first thing they do is they want to collect your information and communicate with you, right? Crazy. And look, 40 plus million customers. That's how serious they are. They put it on their website. That's how many customers that they've done transactions with and that they have collected contact information for. They know what their business is. Go to a restaurant. I like Chicago pizza, even though, or old Chicago pizza, even though I'm not supposed to eat it because I have high cholesterol. Occasionally I'll go there and get their, I don't know if it's called the Mighty Meaty or the Meat Lovers or whatever it is. Thin crust is delicious. They've got tons of beer on tap. I love IPAs. And they try to get you on their World Beer Tour little card. And every time I go there, I, I don't have many cards in my wallet that are like repeat business. I have one for Big River Brewery, and I have one for the World Beer Tour. And that's it. But they got my information, and they send me stuff in email. They send me stuff on my birthday. Every time there's a special event or a new tapping or if there's a local brewery that's doing an event there, they send stuff. I've got two kids, and I'm married, so I don't get to go very often. Uh, on when there's an event, usually it's just whenever we can, but I have a feeling of familiarity with both of these brands because of that. You go to get your um, oil changed. They're going to try to get you on a program. They're going to try to get you information in about the time it, my wife is supposed to get the oil changed. She gets something from Valvoline. And then finally, and that's a service business. That's what you do. You're in the service business. And then finally, if you go to a local church or if you are a member of a political organization, they're going to communicate with you. They're going to send out a magazine. They're going to send out a newsletter. If you're a member of a church, most churches that are on the ball that are larger and established are going to communicate by mail, email, and in social media to their congregants. Then why in the heck does every single industry get this but painting? 
even when I go to our industry conference, I'm like amazed that no one talks about this. It just it's just amazing. It 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 just flabbergasts me. We're talking about how to engage people on Snapchat. I'm like, that's number 37 on the list. Are you kidding me? Number one, two, three, and four is probably freaking talk to your past customers. But anyway, that's just our industry. So how do you increase your percentages of repeat and referral leads? Okay. Number one is realizing that inputs equal outputs, that doing a job doesn't get it done. For everything you want out of life, there is an input, a stimulus, and it creates a response. Okay. If you want to get in shape, the stimulus for your body is a reduction in calorie intake or the type of calories that you take and an input of um, exercise, weight bearing, cardiovascular, whatever you decide to do or some combination thereof. The response from your body is you will build more muscle mass, your metabolism will increase and you will drop weight. Now, if you think about the time that you ate well and exercised last year, does that make you lose weight? No, because that's what happened when in the past. You don't get any benefit hardly. Now, maybe you get a little bit of benefit and it hangs on for a while, but eventually it, it goes, what, extinct. So when you paint for somebody and you do a great job, just like my plumber friend, it works really great for a few months until we forget the name of your company and who you are and the business card goes in the trash and whatever. So what is it? The input in retention and repeat, our repeat and referral business is personal value add communication. That's how we do it. And the response is repeat and referral estimate requests. That's how that happens. So if you're not putting in the inputs, you're not going to get the outputs. Count on it. Just not going to happen. So make sure that you understand that, that it, the repeat and referral business is not governed by you did a good job back in 1963 for somebody. OK, it's that within the last 30, 60 days, they've heard from you. OK, really about every month. And we'll go into that. So number two is getting your message right is very, very counterintuitive. OK. You probably have, now that I've mentioned this, you probably got your wheels turning. Okay, I need to communicate with my clients. Brandon, I believe it. I know it's important. I'm tired of tire kickers. I'm tired of all this crap and running around with jobs that don't close. I'm tired of low volume transactions. It's just, I'm okay. Uh, so I'm going to start blasting my list, okay, about painting all the time. No, you're not. If you do that, it may work for 30 to 60 to 90 days, but then you're going to see something really bad happen. There's a cadence and there is a process. So let's walk through that. Messaging lesson number one is that you do not treat clients like human ATM machines. 100% of your messaging to these people cannot be review me, 10% off debt staining, free paint upgrades, winter special, buy, buy, buy. I see people that sign up. There's a particular offender that I get all the time because I think it just pulls in emails from your Gmail account called signpost. And there's a couple of other ones. And it is just like a people are assaulting their client list. And I guess that's better than never communicating with them. But it's like, give me, give me, give me, give me, take, 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 take 24 seven. So if you're on signpost or something like that and it just belches out offers, and there's none of what we're about to talk about, you need to cut that crap off because that is not helping you out. That is killing your client list. So messaging number two is, and this is a hard one, no one cares about painting topics, even you. Nobody cares about painting. They really don't. I always ask painters, in your free time, what do you do? Do you Google painting websites? Do you like, you know, really read up on stain? And stuff like that. And most painters are like, no, I don't. I watch TV. I, I listen to stories. I read whatever. I hang out with friends. And there, there's a few paint nerds, but even paint nerds don't spend 24 hours looking at this stuff. When you check out at the grocery store, I want you to look at the left and the right. What do you see? Magazines. About who? Strangers you've never met. People buy them. What do you know? What, what's going on? Can you believe Hulk Hogan cheated on his wife? Uh, you know, a, you know, haunted by the ghost of Elizabeth or, you know, one of the Kardashians do something or one of the royals or whatever. OK. 
you can create that same type of minor celebrity in a small list of people through what I'm about to show you. Okay. What you do not see when you check out is people voluntarily consuming 10% off paint. People voluntarily reading about varnish and stain and deck staining and pr protecting your investment. Nobody cares about that. So you got to take all the painting stuff almost out of your communication. I know that's, again, I told you this was going to be counterintuitive. So you've got to get your messaging right. About 60% of your content to your people that you talk about should be what I call irrelevant or semi-relevant content, meaning it has nothing to do with painting or it might have a little to do with painting, but not much. Relevant content should comprise 40% of your newsletter or less. Usually I believe in less. And if your newsletter does not get read and if people do not anticipate the, the thing coming, then it doesn't matter, right? If nobody cares and nobody reads it, it can have all the offers in the world in it if it gets thrown in the trash. So it doesn't work. So irrelevant content, what's that? A personal connection, uh, articles about owners or staff members. You can see on the left here, top left, a picture of, uh, I think this is both Mike and Greg's daughters, if I read that correctly, and they're both in their mother's wedding dresses, okay? They, they're partners in a painting firm, and I think it said the, the title of it was Seeds of Friendship, and you may think, well, that is crazy. Well, I'm sorry, the ladies of the house make the decision, and when they feel like the painters are, they know them and they trust them, they will buy from them again. Even people who are facilities managers, maintenance managers, we'll get to that later. When people feel like they know you on a personal level, they buy from you. You've probably got a hairstylist, an auto mechanic or an insurance agent or somebody you buy something from right now who is not the cheapest and who really probably doesn't even provide you with the best service. But guess what? You know them. Well, we don't get to really know our clients because we only see them occasionally. But if we can communicate with them in the middle, we'll get referrals and we'll get repeat business. What else is what I call irrelevant uh, content? Helpful non-paint articles, like how to control seasonal uh, allergies, how to green up uh, painting around your house um, so that it's environmentally friendly, uh, how to make the world's best tapioca pudding or jalapeno cheese dip or whatever. Puzzles, factoids, anything entertaining, anything that you would read on your own free time if you were sitting, uh, waiting to get your hair cut or on airplane. Okay. That's what you want to contact them with. I know it's very counterintuitive, but I'm telling you, I've been doing this for years. This is it. Semi-relevant content. Customers of the month. Okay. Welcognizing people that give you referrals. Welcoming new clients. Doing project photos, especially if it's funny or entertaining stuff. Employee spotlights. This Is this 10% off painting by painting stuff? Nope. It's people. It's pictures of people and stuff about people. Again, when you check out, what are people buying voluntarily? There's no product service offering value in it, and at least that's not why they're buying it. People. People buy stuff that's helpful, and people buy stuff about people. And so when you communicate with your clients, you need to be communicating with them about stuff like this. And then finally, relevant content. What problems do your customers have that you might be able to help with them? What type of information are you looking for? And do you have some kind of particular service offering? And that needs to be like a very small percentage of what you talk about. It's almost non-existent in our newsletter. So number three, now that we've got, we know who to go after because we know how it impacts our business. Now that we know what we're going to talk to them about, we're going to have to do one other thing. And that's consistently get this value add message in front of your clients without it being just whenever you can do it. Without it being, well, I send them a Christmas card. Well, uh, at the beginning of spring, I send out a postcard. I mean, that's what most people think. Oh, if I think about it once a quarter, they get an email with an offer in it. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. So one thing about the timing you have to realize in your list is that it's a passing parade of interest. It's not a standing army at any given time. When you're talking to your clients, only about 3% of them are probably buying at this moment. Now, that number goes up a little bit because of the seasonality in our business, but only about 3% of them at any given time are buying right this instant, like, you know, within the next 10, 15 days. Six to seven are open to it. They're thinking about it. So you add those two numbers together, about 10% of your list may be purchasing your painting services in the next 30 to 60 days. 30% are not thinking about it at all right now. 30% don't think they're interested at all. And then 30% you 
no, they're not interested. Uh, I mean, yeah, no, we, we did all that. It's going to be a long time before we do that. And what happens is, is everybody moronically believes that everyone's in that bottom 30%. It's, it's crazy. They think that they're just like living in that bottom 30% forever. Once you paint for them, they live in that 30% forever. Got to go find a new client. Well, if they're living in that 30% forever, then what makes you think that the new leads that you're getting for some reason, why are they the hot ones? Does that make any sense? So this is it. So that means that every month you've got to be in front of them because guess what? The percentage of who is in those, in, in those groups changes. So if you're not in front of them, tough luck. Let's look at a list of 500 customers. Pretend like you had 500 customers. This is kind of representative of the number of um, estimate requests or the spending within your list. You see this curve? So in March, let's say that you're going to get 500 estimate requests this year. 42 of them will come in March or 8.36%. So the organic spending would be $41,000. So right now, if you've got a list of about 500 people, between March and April, when March is almost gone, let's say April and May, if you've got a list of 500 people, there's probably close to $100,000 that's going to be spent inside that list soon. Okay? Not talking to them every month is a crazy thing to do. It makes no sense. It's irrational, illogical, very emotional, emotion based on no fact whatsoever. So when you see that these are how many people, how many projects or estimate requests are happening in your list, it really begs the question, well, I probably need to be in front of these people all year, not just when I send them the December Christmas card, when guess what? Spending is almost as low as it's ever going to get. That's kind of dumb. If you're a fisherman, would you go fishing the one month that the fish are the least likely to buy? That's all right. No, we'd like to fish up here. But honestly, if you're a true fisherman, you'd fish every month. So monthly timing is critical. You can't just hit it a lick every quarter. You can't rely on, if you can, if at all possible, you probably don't need to rely on one medium. You need to rely on multiple mediums. So this timing is critical. So everyone gets it, right? If you're on here right now with me, you get it. You're probably like, I get it, Brandon. I'm going to go do it. I'm sold on it. You got me. I'm doing it. And everybody's going to do it, right? But I, I tell people this and they shake their head and go, yeah, I should do this. Well, why don't they do it? And if they do, most people never even never even get up the courage and the enthusiasm or the discipline to do it one time. That's most people never even do it once. And the few that do it once might be excited for a little while and they quit doing it. Why does that happen? So let's talk about that. There are four big problems. OK. The first is. Their uncertainty on they're uncertain on how to even start. All right, Brandon, you've told me all this stuff. I don't even know how to start. I don't you know. Kind of wrote down some notes. I, I kind of understand I need to communicate with my clients, but this is not what I do. Communication. The second one is communication is executed, but it's not very good. Those people that sign up, for example, for signpost. Oh my God, just treat them like an ATM machine. Just beat them up for sales all the time. Beat them up for reviews all the time. Beat them up for referrals all the time. Never give them anything. Just beat them up. No personal connection. Just beat them up. Communication is is inconsistent. Maybe you do it one time really well, but then it just you just get busy. You don't do it. Or content creation is so time consuming, so it's based. It's put on the black uh, the back burner. Whenever you can get to it. Most of the time when owners can get to it is the few months in the winter when they're not that busy, when actually people aren't even buying. And then you get busy and you just can't get around to it. This is why it dies. So I'll give you a personal confession. Things I hate doing, I hire out. OK, painting. When I own my painting business, I hired it out because I can't do it. Never did it. Don't have any intention of ever doing it. Own a painting business, can't paint. Home repairs and remodeling projects. I don't do those either. Don't like it. I can do it. I can do most things. I can read instructions. I can build stuff. I could paint if I wanted to, if I wanted to take enough time. My time is more valuable doing the things that I'm good at, that I like, and life's short. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do auto repairs and maintenance. I'm going to send it to Bobby. Business accounting and bookkeeping. I ain't doing that either. I have a lady, lady named uh, Frida. Comes over, picks up the pile of papers, does the processing. I can run reports in the software that I use for CRM. Scheduling my calendar. Jennifer does that. 
I, I don't schedule my calendar. I don't do that stuff. And then super technical digital marketing work. TC works in our office. He does that. And then Camille, a uh, lady that does stuff specifically with campaigns and Infusionsoft, I hire her for that. Okay. Some of these things are part-time hires or full-time hires. Some of these are services and some of these are very temporary hires. So if you don't like stuff like this, you just need to hire it out. So after five years, I realized that, and it kind of breaks my heart, is that most owners feel the exact same way about digital newsletters and repeat referral leads as I feel about paying. They hate it. They hate marketing. You're on the phone or if you're on this uh, presentation right now, you probably hate marketing. You probably hate that. You probably got five or six things that you really like in your business and this stuff you hate. You know it's critically important to your income and your equity and your peace of mind and your lifestyle, but you don't like it and you're probably not good at it. You could not send me in a room and say, oh, let me explain how to paint and I go paint any more than I could explain. Well, here's how you market and you go market and you get started at it. And after a few years, you might get good at it. But to do it right away is probably unlikely. So we've developed a done for you at home monthly e-newsletter service. It's kind of been a long time coming in this type of um, environment. And it's just I've just figured out that our guys need it. I know it's important. You know it's important, but people just never get around to it. So it's mainly for owners who have a guilty conscience about client neglect, but are too busy to implement a digital newsletter program. Owners who are sick and tired of starting over every year with crappy tire kicking leads. That's probably a lot of you. So i tell you who it's not for is owners that probably have fewer than 100 clients. Most people probably need 100 or so to really make it work. That having been said, if you've got some wherewithal and you're starting out your business and you want to start it out the right way, I'd definitely do it. Owners willing uh, who aren't willing to put together a clean, genuine email list, you can't, and this includes text messaging as well, um, you can't communicate with people that you've not done business with because, number one, you got to put together a list. Number two, whatever service provider you use, even if you do it on your own, with MailChimp, Constant Contact, Call Loop. Um, simple text, whatever it is. If you start sending messages to people and, and they report it as spam, they'll just shut down your entire account. And it's not for owners who believe in alchemy or chasing fads. I know a lot of owners who are just on to the new thing all the time. They'll dabble with something, mess around with something, but they will not just stick with two or three things that really work, that, that, that are good. They want to move on to something else and blame their business problems on everything else. That's This isn't a good fit for those people either. So what is it? Uh, our program is a monthly emailed and texted newsletter. It goes to your past clients, commercial or residential. We'll talk about that in a minute. Well-known, and I stress that, well-known B2B referral partners. If you've got realtors that you've worked with that refer you work, interior decorators, if you've got roofers, plumbers, etc. I mean, don't just pull a list out of the phone book or out of the AGC or the home builders directory. That's not what this is for. If people do not know you and you send this stuff to them, they will mark it as spam and then your entire program gets shut down, whether you do it or somebody else does it. So these have to be people that know you. Uh, people that are commercial prospects uh, that you have met in person, like you've met them a few times, maybe they haven't bought from you, but they you've sat down and physically in front of them and seen them so they know you. These are not prospects, okay? These are people that are warmer than that. Your personal center of influence, say you know some people, that you go to church with, that you're in Rotary Club with, that you do something with and you think they might buy from me one day or they might at least refer me to people. And then, but not, 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 not a random list of people purchased or found. You'll just get shut down. Okay, you think you can do it, you can't do it. So here are my three principles for effective newsletter style. Okay, and you can write these down, use them on your own. Personal, okay. It needs to be personal. It needs to look and feel like you, Bobby the painter, Earl the painter, Matthew the painter, whoever it is. I'll just read some names here. Victor, Tulsia, Torrance, Yuri, whoever the painter sent this stuff out to them from you. OK, personal. It needs to be plain. This is a weird thing. And again, it goes back to this counterintuitive stuff. Everyone gets beautifully formatted corporate throw up emails. You get them like a message from our CEO, some giant conglomerate that, you know, they don't care about you. They're not a person. 
There's no interaction. It's beautifully styled, but it's just what I call corporate throw up. Somehow you got on the list one day, you bought something from them. It reminds me of like the emails you get from hotels, Marriott, um, who else? Um, Hilton, Sheraton. Like you get those things and you're just like, no, but this, this was sent by like a computer. Like I don't even know if a human did this. I think this is just auto generated. It just doesn't feel right. And so my rule is always look around at what everyone else does and don't do that. OK, you've got to think about this from the client's perspective. They want their painter to send them stuff and they want it to look professional, not pricey. Professional means like it doesn't look like untrustworthy garbage, but it doesn't look like you paid someone to do it for you. I know that sounds weird and it's weird, especially if you do pay somebody to do it for you. You don't want it to look like you paid somebody to do it for you. It won't need to look like it was put together by your little hands and it went out. When people see slick, expensive advertising and things like that, they think that they're overpaid. It's the same thing. There's a guy over here working on my neighbor's house last week, doing some masonry work on the chimney. I swear to God, the guy pulls up in like a $65,000, $70,000 truck that's tricked out. And I'm like, I would never in a million years take that kind of truck that's new and expensive. I don't care if he did buy it on credit to a customer's house because it looks awful. To be driving about a 10 year old, well kept car. That's what you drive to a customer's house. If you've got that other truck, fine. You've done well. A lot of us do. Keep it at your house. I'd never drive a Mustang 72 Blazer to a customer's house to do an estimate. You shouldn't drive that stuff. Same thing with your marketing. It needs to look professional, it needs to look personal, it needs to look plain. It doesn't need to look like you, you know, you paid a million dollars to have it done. People don't like that. Those are the three P's. So what's in it? Personal connections. There's an example of the hall sent out something about getting members of the year award, helpful non-paint articles, tips for greening up cleaning, trivia puzzles and recipes, client recognition. Okay, there's somebody recognizing the customer of the month um, and one single solitary painting service offer. I don't even have that here, but we put it in ours. So does newsletter marketing work for residential? Okay, these are just some comments from people that have been using newsletter marketing for a while. I'm not going to read them word for word, but here's one from Matthew. The ROI on monthly newsletters have been incredible, literally six figures in sales in the past few months. Um, they send stuff out. He's touching them. He feels positive about it. And who knew something so simple could produce such results? These jobs close at 80 percent. Unbelievable. And I spent 2K to Google for one cold lead last month. Sometimes you get in a bidding war for commercial or something like that, and you're using AdWords or whatever, and you paid through the nose for them. Okay, so this is amazing stuff. Um, honestly, the reactivation in the newsletter and the nine word emails have been a blessing. The referrals have never stopped through the slow periods at different times of the year, winter, and I put that in there for Torrance. The results are a little smaller, but the return on sending out email is tremendous. Here's Sean, somebody who's been doing this for about five years now. And his repeat, and this is something we gave him an award for this year, his repeat and referral business is at 80.26%. Could you imagine that eight out of 10 leads come or either repeat or referred? Makes it easier to have, have consistency in your business. The halls, <clears throat> I will say that after years of marketing to our past customers, we have a close rate of about 90% for repeat clients. We can have a, uh, we also have a high close rate on referrals from these clients. Important. And remember, going back to those charts, same amount of leads, completely different income outcome. Newsletter benefits us in two angles. First, business growth is all about focused discipline, finding things that work and keep doing them over and over again. It forces them to focus on important things. And secondly, I can't tell you how many times I've heard clients tell me that they read the newsletter. They actually enjoy getting it. I can't help but be tickled inside. I love making a positive difference in someone's day. It's worth it for you and your clients. And does newsletter market work for B2B referrals? I tell people to put B2B referrals on the list. And sometimes people ask, this is a neat little email I got just, I don't know, almost a month ago. It said, Brandon, at the Realtor Education event at Ready, Set, Spring, I ended up having conversations with a couple of realtors about our newsletters. They gushed about how much they liked to read our lead article. The conversation was warm and friendly, literally because they felt like they knew us, liked us, and could trust us. I'm going to read this at length. All because we communicate real stuff to them regularly. I'm becoming increasingly convinced that our monthly newsletter will become one of our most powerful pieces of marketing. Over the long term, another realtor gave us a lead for a five-figure interior house painting, all because of the newsletter. Five figures. 
That was their exact words because of the newsletter. They said, I like how he adds this. Thought you might like to hear about that. It might help offset the contractor belly aches about the cost and time commitment of the newsletter. We're actually taking out the time commitment with what we're talking about today, but there is a little bit of cost, not much. And then does newsletter marketing work for commercial? One of the big things I get, and it just drives me nuts, people think that like residential and commercial clients are aliens from a different, two different planets. Where does the person leave when they go home? Home. Where does the residential client go during the day? The office, they're the same person. They live in two different boxes. Yeah, they go to one box for work, they go to the other box at night. Okay. So same thing. And we have people that use it. So our commercial painting business, uh, we many times see longer decision times and repaint cycles. The newsletter helps keep us out in front of our customers. They don't uh, when they don't have anything going. Clients have told us that they like the upbeat nature and enjoy the cartoons. We try to create a main story that connects their clients. Uh, we may not get them out every month, but if we're the only one doing it, then we're leaps ahead of the competition. Here's another one from uh, Mike and them. I'll keep it brief. Uh, he happens to be the production manager for a large commercial property. and needs lots of painting. We're about to close a $13,000 interior repaint in February. And this is only the first phase, uh, all because I managed to get his email and we kept sending him a newsletter every month. And where did they say they first started? It was probably 18 months ago. So, I mean, you put somebody on the list once you meet them and it works. So what do you have to do to make all this happen? As far as what we're talking about with what we're doing. So if you're going to work with us on this and you're interested in us doing it for you, and I'll go through the details in a minute, there's some work you've got to do. And this is sad. Every time there's money, there's work. But there are two options. One option is a little bit of work up front, not much at all. And the other option is no work at all, hardly. So we remind you, we template the process, we format it, we send it out. So we need a picture of you and 100 words about something that happened last month. If you're unfamiliar with doing newsletters, basically it's like a longish Facebook, Facebook, Facebook post. So, you know, when you do a Facebook post and it's like you and the kids, we had so much fun camping or going to Disneyland or whatever we did, or you and your wife celebrating your anniversary. It's like a long Facebook post. We need one long Facebook post from you a month, or it could be about your grandparents, or it could be about, something you care about, or it could be about a sports team, or it could be about a hunting trip, or it could be about one of your employees or their kids. I mean, easy, right? It's a long Facebook post. You probably post several Facebook posts a month. And if you don't, you probably, if your grandmother called you or your aunt or your uncle or one of your friends and said that you hadn't talked to in a month and you said, hey, buddy, what's going on? You would seriously say, well, things are going okay here. The kids, kids are doing well. So-and-so's playing soccer. Such and such is da 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 da. My wife's been sick. She's kind of had the flu and we're getting over it. What you just said on the phone, I kid you not. You could record it, transcribe it, put it in your newsletter, and people will be like, oh, I feel like I know what's going on. I know it's crazy. It's counterintuitive, but it works. You need to send us a customer of the month. Take a picture with one of your painters, somebody. I mean, we prefer this. We're going to give you option two in a minute. Referral sources to recognize. Do you have a realtor that sends you a lot of referrals? Let's recognize them. Did somebody send you a referral this month? Let's recognize them. These are just names in an email. Real easy. And then uh, new clients from last month, if you want to list them. You could list their names and their street and everything about them, or you could just put their family name, the Jones family, the Lewis family, the whatever family. Now, you or your office admin or your office admin or your operations dude or somebody or your spouse, depending on how you run your business, it probably takes you 20, 30 minutes to get us this stuff a month. That's the truth. Okay. 20, 30 minutes a month. You send us the stuff. We take care of the rest. Now, option two, it's what I call the autopilot option. I don't recommend this. And that is where you say, I'm sorry, Brandon, I'm too busy this month. I got it to you the last two or three months, but we're just covered up. Can you just send something out for me? And we say, okay. We send out a short personal feeling message with a picture of you. Generic. Because we didn't, we wrote it for you, but they don't know that you didn't write it. Kind of usually not. We don't make it super polished because we want it to sound genuine and personal. And we take out or make universal changes to the sections that you've not given us information of. So if you don't have customers of the month, we might just leave in a picture it says we love our customers. We don't list the customers of the month. You didn't send us somebody referrals. You might put, you know, thank you to everyone that sent us referrals this month. 
okay? Or thanks for the referrals. We appreciate referrals. We send it out to your current list and you don't do anything but send us an email back that says, I ain't got time to do it. This is a better option. Okay, a lot of people, like, say for example, I keep going back to beat this up, but it's because it aggravates me. That signpost stuff. That's a bad thing to recommend that people do. It's probably okay in the short term, but it hurts you. My job is to always give you the best option. This is the second best option. So an effective digital newsletter is simply a tool that allows you to reduce the number of low quality leads that you run. We're about to wrap up here. Increase your personal income and reduce unproductive marketing expenses and increase your free time so you can bring more predictability and less stress to your business. It's a tool. What are we after? Less crappy leads, more personal income, more free time. It is a tool that allows us to get there. That's it. So you can do all this stuff yourself if you wanted to because we do it. All right. We do it for our members. By the time you write the articles, source the images, format the newsletter, import the emails, test the emails, send the emails, trial and error, it's eight to 12 hours a month. And this is why painters never get around to it. Never get around to it. Now, this is us doing it when we know what we're doing. And we've done it for five years. That's roughly, I don't know, what, what is that, 60 newsletters that we've done? Uh, I don't know if my math is wrong. Somebody can shoot me an email, but a lot of newsletters, not counting the ones that I did when I worked for nonprofits and political organizations. OK, we've done a lot of newsletters. It takes forever. This is why people never get around to it. So our done for you at home monthly newsletter email edition is a concierge service. We give you unique personal and non salesy format. We give you helpful value add written articles that your clients will appreciate you. Trivia, recipes, puzzles, royalty free images. Painting services deal of the month. You can change it if you want to. We give you 100% hands off technical integration, importing and updating of client lists, and we send it for you. Okay? You don't have to do any of that. So, by the way, we do this in house. This is actually a schematic of our office. I created it just for you. I hope you like it. This is how our office is set up. Jennifer's in the first office. She helps put together the content uh, and all that stuff. I actually probably should have put a red arrow over her head. Uh, TC. Um, helps get it out the door. John gets the information from you and I look it all over to make sure it's okay. And I came up with it to be, to begin with. And I guess I pay these people. So that's my contribution to all this. And I teach you how to do it. And this is the hallway. If you ever come to our office, this is exactly what it looks like. And there's a video room between me and TC and John. So if you ever wondered what the office looks like, that's what it looks like. So our done for you at home monthly e-newsletter concierge service is normally 147 a month. But if you sign up, We'll give you $50 off your first month, okay? All you have to do is go to paintersacademy.com slash repeat and use the promo code repeat. That's a lot of repeats, right? We did it twice. If you're going to repeat, you got to repeat. But I repeat myself. <laughs> so go to paintersacademy.com slash repeat and use promo code repeat. And I know that's a whopping $147 a month. But here's the thing. If you've tuned out, tune back in. This is how I make all my personal marketing decisions for my entire life. Your average transaction size is about $3,000. I know it. It's even higher for repeat customers. Your gross profits at 45%, which is about where you should be to 50%, are $1,350 on that project. No joke. I kid you not. You have to find 1.3 repeat jobs over 365 days to pay for this. Not counting referrals. This is how cheap this is. And people will not, there'll be some of you listening to this that will not buy this. I'm not saying it's, I, I will tell you, I would say what I think it is, but it's crazy, especially if you're not doing anything or if you infrequently get this stuff out or if you're doing what we'll talk about in a second. We also have an add on that you can do, and it's our done for you at home monthly newsletter text edition. I love text messages. If you're on the Painters Weekly uh, subscription list, you get our videos by email and text. I don't know which one you interact with more. You know that. But we have the text edition. And the reason I like text messages is because 98% of texts get read versus 22% of emails. They are a little bit more expensive. Okay, and we'll talk about that in a second. But it is more engaging. It's not either or. It's always all of the above. When you're following up on your estimates and your sales process, you should be mailing, emailing, texting, and phoning. We don't just rely on phone and email because we've got two other ways we can contact people. It's crazy. You would never paint a house 
with just a brush, would you? I'm just going to paint the whole house with a brush, or I'm just going to try to paint the whole house with a roller, or I'm going to try to paint the whole house with a sprayer and never use those tools. No, you use the tools that work in different situations. When you're contacting your clients, you don't know how they're going to be the most responsive. So you do it all. So it's an additional 147 a month, and it's up to 1,000 contacts, same as with the emails. It's up to 1,000 contacts. If you have more, you can go ahead and buy, and we'll tell you what the addition is. It's only what we get charged. Okay, We use a, a portal service. And it just costs more to do text messages than it does email. But we have to do the email in order to do the text. I'm not going to get into the technical details, but it creates an HTML newsletter that we can send out. We can't do the text without the email first. OK, because if they clicked on it, there'd be nowhere for them to go. So with the text, if you add them both together. Are you ready? You got to find 2.6 jobs. If you add them both together to break even over the next 365 days, if we can't get you 2.65 jobs. We've done some really bad stuff here and you'll save $50 off if you use that promo code repeat when you go to this link here. So if you do the upgrade combo, our done for you at home monthly newsletter, email and text edition concierge service is 194 whopping dollars, 200 bucks. You'll waste $200 in paint materials on the next paint job. You'll be wasting that on every job, you know, probably a couple of jobs every month. This is money that goes into a good place. For $200, you couldn't get more than seven or eight clicks on the internet, Google AdWords. This is amazingly powerful to communicate to hundreds of people at the click of a button, and you don't have to do much. It really is. It's crazy. This is probably, this is the most brain dead simple offer I've ever made since I've been running the Painters Academy, and I've never made that claim before. It's just so simple to say yes to. And for those of you who sign up today, we will do our famous nine word email blast during onboarding. Torrance talked about how that worked, and we'll do it for you. You don't even have to do it, we'll do it for you. And then also for those of you who aren't APPC members, or if you are and you just want to get back on the phone with me for a check-in call, we'll do a 60 minute business diagnostic call. So you get an hour of my time plus we do the nine word email in most cases. I'm going to back up here and then take questions for most of you. When we do this nine word email, you will make more than enough money to pay for this program for two or three years. No joke for most of you. If you've never communicated with your list in the past, maybe even some of you have. So this is a real easy to get your money back in advance, in advance. So we back it up with an ironclad 60 day money back guarantee. If you say we're not happy, I don't care why you say we're not happy. You can be making it up. You just be broke. So I'm broke and I lied in bad faith. I'll give you your money back anyway, because this stuff works. We'll give you your money back. I'll take on all the risk personally. And so how do I sign up? It's real simple. You go to paintersacademy.com slash repeat. I'm showing you a screenshot of exactly what it looks like. You go to this page. You'll see up here on the top, the at home monthly newsletter email edition. You'll click the buy now button for the at home monthly newsletter text edition. Add it. That's what I would do. You can do one. That's fine. But I would do both because it's so cheap. And then if you type in repeat where it says promo code and click apply, it's going to show you a price of like 190 something. OK, 94. So it's real simple, real cheap, real easy. So. I'm going to go ahead now and take questions on repeat and referral business. Uh, if you want to get, take advantage of the bonuses and the pricing, you'll need to go ahead and get in there now. Uh, I'm going to ask people that if you have questions to click the raise your hand or click the uh, question button or the raise your hand button. And what I will do is unmute the line and I will take the questions. If any of you have to hop off for any reason, feel free. But I'm going to go ahead and take questions live now. I've ran over by about 10 minutes. I apologize. But uh, if you've got a question, just click the little raise your hand button and I will answer them. I've got Todd and Steve have their hands raised. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute Todd first and then go to Steve. Todd, it's Brandon Lewis. Glad to have you here, bud. Hey, how are you? Man, I'm, I'm awesome. Ready? Yes, I can. Go ahead. It worked. This is the first time I've done a video chat thing on my laptop. So good deal. Hey. I'm glad if you can if you can figure that out, you can do this. <laughs> so that's pretty easy. So I was writing down some notes and some questions to ask um, while while you were talking. One was, can you tell me a little? Like I have 
a list of former clients. So they are solidly people that know me. Um, but it was a little confusing what you meant when you said clean list. So a clean list is really if you've not if you communicated with have you communicated with this list uh, via email before? Um, I have a number of people who I have and a number of people who I haven't. So if it were me in that situation, and this is something that John will help walk you through if you go forward with us, I would export. What what are you using to email now? What service? Um, I don't. I, I just use uh, Gmail. Okay. If you just use Gmail, then nobody is unsubscribed to anything. And that's what I mean by clean. Sometimes if you use MailChimp or Constant Contact, then you would take uh, and export all the ones who are still subscribers and okay. the ones who have never gotten an email underneath them in an excel sheet very simple and then you'd give us that list of okay. first name phone number email address usually we take the mailing address and everything and try to import it just because it's good to have in case right. you ever need it or maybe your computer crashes or you lose their contact information at least we would have it i see that happen a lot so if these are past clients and you've never ran them through an email system of any sort then we would just take the entire list. Okay. Well, I, I will say that I, I I have had for about a year right now, probably I have used Signpost. Yeah, and I'm sorry. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mean to uh, I don't mean to beat that up. But what you would do then, if you've done Signpost, right. is go in and look at the people who have unsubscribed and make sure that you don't put them back make on sure the list. That's send them more stuff, right? And that's a shame because really, if you do a good newsletter that's not taking if it's not treating them like a human ATM machine which is what signpost does right. um, they won't opt out as much they're happy to hear from you they feel good about it it feels personal and folksy and not salesy but signpost it's better than nothing like if you weren't going to do anything the fact that you did signpost means that you care about your clients and you have this vision of it but every time I get those I get there's a guy I wish I could almost think of his name I get all his signpost stuff and every time I get it, I just cringe because it's just like, give me, give me, give me, give me. And I hate that. The one thing that I haven't heard you talk about with Signpost, when I initially signed up and I gave the, you know, I uploaded to them a bunch of emails and, and people's names and, and email addresses. Um, and there was a little bit of a barrage of, hey, can you please uh, do a review for me on Google or on whatever or right here on Signpost? Um, is there anything in any of the newsletters you do? Because that's good to have people doing those reviews and whatnot. Is that yeah? Done so that's a separate. That's a, com that's a completely separate service that we offer. Um, ideally, you're better off putting those people in a cadence um, once a month. That once a month, once you do work from them, because the further away you get from them purchasing the less likely they are to do it. Honestly, if you want to get about a 90 some odd percent conversion rate on that, you need to train and incentivize your crew leads to do it. Um, if you do that, I mean, you'll every job you get like nine out of 10 of them, you'll get a review. Well, maybe not nine out of 10 because some people don't have Gmail accounts, but about eight out of 10 to seven out of 10, you can get without exception. Okay. So that's okay. an operational issue. If you try to do it after the fact with emails, it's helpful. Um, but um, I always kick my own legs out from underneath me because I tell people the truth. You really need to do that operationally in the field, and your secondary thing needs to be digital marketing of some sort. It doesn't need to be the primary thing you do. Okay. All right. And do you have like a system for what to say to people out in the field to encourage them to go get a review? Or I actually do have an entire module on that, but that's more in our traditional service offering, like on our a PPC gold membership side because uh, we have two kind of distinct things we do traditional marketing and sales and operations and hiring almost like a, a business school for painters if you will and on the other side is like our done for you digital services we do this one particular or two particular things or a combination of things and it's kind of all a cart and those are two you know kind of two different things okay all right um and do you have anything like I'm just curious about? Do you also have anything that deals with website? Yes, in any of your services. Yes, we build we build websites, but I did not talk about that today because I really wanted to just talk right. about 
repeats right. and referrals. So if you mm -hmm. want to send me, Todd, just an email, brandon at paintersacademy.com. Obviously, if you're on this thing, you got it from me. And John can do a complete diagnostic of what you've got going on. And, and he's like me. He's very straightforward. If it's good, he'll tell you, we can't do anything for you. You're kicking ass here. Let's not throw money away. And if it's not good, he'll let you know, too. Right. OK, because I haven't been entirely pleased with the website guy that I've been using. Yeah, um, well, it's, it's that's another conversation. I'll be happy to have it with you yeah. offline, though. OK, um, the other question I had was, what if you're dealing with a market and. OK, let's say I live in a, in a town and John Joe, whatever, lives in the same town. And we both use your service to send a newsletter mm -hmm. a done for you thing. Do you do anything to to make my newsletter look different from John's, or no, when we, someone gets a newsletter? Yeah, we've never different? we've never done that before, and I don't worry about that even with our gold memberships. Now we do not set up the same website. We will not do two websites in the same market because you're you're really just competing against another painter in the same city, the same geo modifiers. We will not do more than one. But on the, the conventional newsletters and stuff like that, I mean, it is seriously like if, if you were peeing in the Atlantic Ocean and I were peeing in the Atlantic Ocean, it would not make a difference. Right. Um, okay. It doesn't. It's not going to lift the boats. OK, <laughs> right. it, would, it would be rare. It'd be rare. But, you know, yeah, it's, no, it's not. It, it is so infrequent that it's right. not worth right. messing with. What were you saying about not doing something in the same geo? Area. If we work with a, somebody on a website, we will not work with two painters in the same geo modifier. So like Chattanooga, Tennessee, if we're working with somebody in that particular place, we will not work with a second contractor for web services on a okay. website. Okay. Okay. Well, then I well, can't. Todd, I, I, hate to, I hate to cut you off, but if you will, fine, email, if you will email me because you got a lot of questions, yeah. we'll set up some time to talk. But I've got Steve and a couple other people that have questions. Okay. I want to try to get to them. All right. Thank you. Awesome, dude. Thanks for coming here. You asked some very good questions. Those are some of the best questions I've heard in a while. So thank you. Uh, Steve McCarthy. Go ahead, bud. Steve. Coming to you live. Can you hear me? You're unmuted. All right, Steve. Steve must be muting his own line or something like that because he's not coming up. Other questions. Anybody else want to click the raise the hand button? I will come to you and answer any question that you might have about this topic that we are covering here and other related ones. I'll come to you one more time, Steve, just in case. Steve, can you hear me? Steve, Steve, Steve does not want to talk. I'm going to go to John. John's got his hand up here. Go ahead, John. John Holst. Attendee is muted by an organizer. Click to unmute. Okay, you're unmuted. John, hand raised for four minutes. John. Okay, John unclicked his hand raised. Apparently, he didn't really have a question. Other people on the line that have a question, if you'll just click your hands, uh, hand raise, I'll come to you. Anybody have any? Well, guys, I'm going to go through here just really quickly and look at the questions to see. Um, so a few questions. So I need to collect email addresses from all of my customers. Yes and no. Um, you've probably got some that you can go ahead and send, but you may have cell phones. A lot of people that do not have email addresses have cell phones. So if they have a mobile number, we can do the text newsletter. It's best to do both and we'll work with what you have. Sometimes people have sporadic, uh, data. Um, probably not. Uh, question somebody asked Victor past estimates that did not convert to clients. Do you include them as well? If you're doing them yourself and you're sending mail and you've been doing it, it's probably okay and something you can get away with. However, the problem becomes deliverability. If someone is an unconverted lead and they don't know you or didn't buy from you or don't like you or don't have a relationship with you, sometimes having them on the newsletter list can hurt your deliverability. And if you get too many spam reports, then they will shut your account down. So to start with, my advice would be keep it repeats, keep it B2B referral sources that you really know, keep it B2B, uh, keep it commercial prospects that you really know. And if you've got a handful of really like what I call kick ass potential clients that you just barely missed 
and you felt like you had a good rapport with them, you might add them, but I'd be real careful that you don't mess up your whole list. Uh, it says, John says, I, I'm not so computer savvy. That's great. That's what this entire thing is made for. Uh, you can call up a temporary agency in your area. Call up one of your friends, a younger person. You can put an ad on Craigslist. If you got a bunch of paper estimates, you just have somebody sit down and type all that stuff up into Excel and send it to us. That's the whole reason we created this program is for people that don't have the time and don't have the talent to do it. So that is that, John. Other questions? I'm going to go one last time if somebody wants to raise their hand and ask a question. Otherwise, I'm going to close this out. I do not see any other hands up. Those are some good questions. Guys, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, this is a very simple, easy way, very low cost, high ROI, virtually zero risk way to generate leads that will close. Uh, I would go to paintersacademy.com. I would use the promo code and I would go because this is, again, as I mentioned, this is the most brain dead, simple offer of no work get some money in your bank account that I've ever put forward. So I hope that some of you take advantage of it. I'm Brandon Lewis with the Painters Academy and Painters Weekly saying, please, for the love of God, communicate with your past clients, generate some repeat and referral business because it is the best way to propel your personal income, reduce risk and bring predictability to your painting business. Until next time, I'm Brandon signing off, guys. Take care.